The mantle of Captain America has been a privilege to multiple individuals and has been carried and passed over time to those who are ready to answer the call for America. The most famous to carry the title being Steve Rogers. Other notable individuals that have carried the mantle have been Sam Wilson, Bucky Barnes, and John Walker. In The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we have seen John Walker accept the call from the government to stand as their iconic Captain America. John Walker in the current MCU has taken the Super Soldier Serum, which enhances his human potential with strength, speed, and stamina, Steve Rogers being the prime example of what the Super Soldier Serum was intended for. In the MCU version of John Walker, he has taken the Super Soldier Serum to help himself be the Captain America that he thinks the US needs. However, in the comics, he gains his powers and abilities through a different route. In Marvel Comics, John Walker is introduced as from a small town in Georgia where he grew up looking up to his older brother Mike who was serving his country in the military. His admiration for his brother inspired him to carry out his brother's legacy and he also enlisted in the US Army. John joined the army to honor his brother, but often felt that he was not quite the hero that his brother was. This thought weighed on John and brought down the view of his own self-worth. In search of a way to become the hero that he wanted to be, he went to the power broker in search of a quick, albeit risky, path to obtain great power. We can already see how John Walker in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier lacks confidence in being Captain America and is worried about filling the shoes of Steve Rogers. In the comics, John's close friend Lamar from the military decided to join John in their pursuit of the power broker's experimentation. Lamar would go on to be called Battlestar, and John called US Agent till he took on the mantle of Captain America. Meanwhile, Steve Rogers was initially a World War II reject due to his health complications, but volunteered for Project Rebirth, which is where he received his dose of the Super Soldier Serum. Steve would go on to become the heroic icon of Captain America. The comic versions of both John Walker and Steve Rogers are formidable fighters in their own right, with a solid military training background. The two have faced off multiple times within the comics, and the question rises on which of the two super soldiers would win in an all-out fight. With the help of the power broker, John Walker surpasses peak human level strength. He has even been able to press lift 10 tons. John's muscles produce fewer toxins in his body, which registers to the brain for fatigue, allowing him to have greater stamina than a normal human being. Alongside his extreme stamina, John also has tougher body tissues which make him insanely durable. Meanwhile, Steve, with the help of the Super Soldier Serum, is the living embodiment of a perfect human. He possesses peak human strength, speed, and stamina, and is a master when it comes to strategy and being a tactician. Steve excels in hand-to-hand -hand combat and is able to quickly adapt to situations and learn from his mistakes to make calculated decisions to gain the upper hand. The first fight we'll cover between these two juggernauts took place when Steve was interrogating John about an accusation of a crime that had happened. Steve quickly realized that John was just baiting him to throw the first punch to start a fight. Steve started to walk away when John got frustrated that he didn't get his chance to fight Captain America. His pride overcame him as he felt that he needed to prove that he was superior to Steve. Steve's reflexes allowed him to dodge John's first attack with his torch sword. Steve was very methodical with his movements due to the raw strength that John possessed. The two fought going back and forth for a little bit, but John hadn't been able to land any significant blows to take down Cap. The fight ended in an awkward stalemate when John Walker suddenly dipped out of the fight. Another time the two fought, Steve was out on a mission with Mercedes Knight, also known as Misty Knight. Steve and Misty were clearing a building when they were attacked by John Walker, who was in possession of the iconic Captain America shield. John was able to surprise Steve and with his brute strength was able to land significant hits and seemed to have the upper hand on Cap. But before anything too serious was able to happen, Misty stepped in and contained John within an energy beam, where they were able to talk to him and figure out why he attacked them. However, if it wouldn't have been for the interruption from Misty, it looks as though Cap may have lost this fight. Outside of the comics in the MCU, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier explains that Dr. Nagel was able to recreate the Super Soldier Serum. These vials of Super Soldier Serum were taken by Carly Morgenthau and were then destroyed, with the one remaining vial being taken by John Walker. With Walker's new enhanced abilities from this serum, he would in theory be on par with the human capabilities that Steve Rogers had. At this point, there would be no physical difference between the two. What would separate the two in a fight instead of their raw strength would be their mental capabilities and skills in combat. 
Obviously, the two super soldiers have not faced off in the MCU, at least not at the time of making this video, and both of the comic fight scenarios that we provided either didn't end with a clear winner or weren't really a fair one-on-one -on -one fight. However, we want to hear from you in the comments below on who you think would win the pure and simple all-out brawl between Steve Rogers and John Walker for the title of the true strongest Captain America.